Hi folks, this is the Fighting Nerd and his co-host, Jolly Roger. And Jolly and I just got done last night watching the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was by no means good, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But even though the show visually was just the way it was filmed, looked great. It was really clear early on that it wasn't going to feel like Star Trek. The uh, first thing that hit me about this was the main character, which is uh, Michael Barnum, was not going to be able to carry the show. She just did not seem to have the gravitas, the personal charisma, to be the main character of a TV series. Now, granted, she is supposed to have been raised on Vulcan, uh, Ward of Sarek, which would have made her Spock's adoptive sister, how we got through decades of Star Trek and never heard her mentioned before, is... Uh, an interesting continuity problem. But supposedly she was raised on Vulcan and doesn't have an emotion, any emotional range. But she goes from Vulcan self-control to emotional chaos at the flip of a switch. Also, it's very clear by the end of the first episode that uh, she is a role learn for one of if you remember the Next Generation regular character Roller and very popular, played by Michelle Forbes. She was uh, a Starfleet officer that took matters into her own hands in a dangerous situation. He got some people killed. Went to prison and was later released for a special mission and then mentored by Captain Picard. Well, it looks like this is exactly what's going to happen with the Burnham character. which, you know, is, if nothing else, extremely unoriginal. And for a show that made so many changes in the name of origin to the canon, I mean, so many changes to the canon in the name of originality, that strikes me as rather odd. Uh, and then you have uh, the obvious continuity poles that are a real pain to me. First of all, she is convicted at the end, spoiler alert, she's convicted at the end of mutiny and a bunch of other things, and sent to prison. But if you go back, you really hardcore Trekkers, go back to the original series episode with Foley and Webb, check off Ask Spock, asks, excuse me, asks Spock to, excuse me, sorry, unscripted here, check off Asks Spock if there was ever a mutiny on a starship. And Spock replies, no record whatsoever of such an occurrence incident, or something to that effect. Yet we have Burnham committing mutiny on a starship, attacks her captain, and tries to start a war on her own on her own accord. Okay, now you might be saying later on they're going to explain that she was pardoned and her record was expunged and she was granted a rank bank, blah, blah, blah. And maybe even that whole incident was classified so nobody ever heard of it. But then again, you have the fact that she is supposed to be Sarek's ward, Spock's adopted sister. So how again would Spock not know about that? Uh, so, yeah. And, and then, of course, there are the Klingons. If they are going to use the show's continuity, and they, it seems like they're trying, why did they change the Klingons so much? There is so much makeup on those actors that they could be the greatest actors on the planet. You'd never know it because you can't see them. No reason to change the Klingons. In that, in that manner. Uh, and then there is a battle scene, if you can call it that, uh, in the second episode. As a matter of fact, the second episode was called Battle at the Binary Star. 
and it was worthless. It was awful. The worst battle scene from Deep Space Nine was better than what we saw on Discovery. Uh, I'm at a loss to explain it. What is it, 20 odd years long with, more spe with better special effects? They can't do a better battle scene than what they did. Uh, and then there are a lot of this is, I understand these are random thoughts, these are not organized, this is unscripted. But mostly, the whole plot seemed forced, and the interaction between the characters was forced. I know they said there were going to be more conflict. They probably wanted, instead of doing, wanted to do the new BSG, the new Battlestar Galactica, instead of Star Trek, just like J.J. Abrams wanted to do Star Trek instead, I mean Star Wars instead of Star Trek. But here it is. It failed, even in the conflict between the characters and the drama, because they spend pretty much the entire first episode establishing this mentor relationship between Captain Gio, who I think I'm, I'm butchering that name, but Michelle Yeoh's character, and Burnham. And then, by the end of that episode, where they're almost like a father, I mean mother-daughter relationship here, in about 10 seconds, Burnham throws that all away, puts a Vulcan nerve pitch on her captain, tries to open fire to cling on ship express uh, against uh, express starfleet orders throws away her relationship with her captain forgets any training she may have had at uh, starfleet academy forgets military discipline goes off on an emotional tangent because she remembers how the klingons killed her parents and because her ward sarg told her so literally it, in, the, in the show it takes about oh my, maybe two minutes for her to go from that. Uh, right? Which begs to ask, how did she make it to the rank of commander in a military organization? So I just found that extremely forced and extremely unlikely. It just it didn't sell me. So as I said, the show wasn't the huge disappointment that was going to be, uh, that I expected. My expect expectations were low, uh, and so it was better than I expected. But it's not Star Trek. It's just not Star Trek. It doesn't feel like Star Trek. It doesn't really look like Star Trek. And there are just gigantic plot holes in it. And especially if they're saying it's prime continuity, then there are huge problems here with that continuity. Uh, another example of that is the Klingons are using cloaking devices. They call them distortion fields or something like that, but they're cloaking devices. Now this is before Kirk's era. Right? So you go back to the original series episode Balance of Terror. You see, see the Romulans, excuse me, you see the Romulans using cloaking devices, and Kirk and Spock are surprised. It's something new. So Starfleet just forgot that the Klingons were using cloaking devices before the Romulans? They used to call them Romulan cloaking devices, and then later on, in the Enterprise incident, they're freaked out because the Klingons made a treaty with the Romulans, and the Klingons are using cloaking, and now are cloaking devices too. It was something relatively new back then. But now they have it in this show. In this uh, series. So, all in all, uh, I probably will eventually wind up watching the rest of the series. I'm not in a big hurry. I'm certainly not going to pay extra for it uh, on CBS Direct. I, you know, sooner or later, that there, there's going to be some kind of way to watch these shows. Uh, without paying for them, because uh, judging from the first two episodes, they're not worth paying for. Uh, I would much rather watch reruns of the old show, uh, uh, the, the old show, or the original series. Uh, 
it just it fails as Star Trek. It could succeed maybe as a, another uh, standalone science fiction thing if they didn't try to tie it to the Star Trek franchise. But the Star Trek uh, franchise makes money. At least it did until Abrams came along and you know this whatever discovery is. It just and it makes it made no sense to me that like I said the plot seemed very contrived. Uh, there was no chemistry among the cast, but then again, you don't know if you've seen the cast. You went an entire episode and maybe, I think, saw two regular cast members. Um, I really think that they, uh, they didn't, it was obvious they didn't want to do Star Trek. So the people got in there, they wanted to make changes to Star Trek, uh, make changes to Star Trek to suit their fancy. But they felt constrained by the old continuity. So they didn't really want to do Star Trek. So they started changing Star Trek. And when fans found out about it, they had fans like me. They protested fiercely. And they were forced to be a little bit constrained about by the continuity. But not really. So what we've got is this mix of a show that looks like the Abrams movies. Has, is trying to feel like the new Battlestar Galactica. And really accomplishing neither. So all I can say with, is with this particular branch of Star Trek, uh, they have failed. I would like to be able to say I'm going to give it you know, to the end of the season to see if it gels, but the foundation is already so weak I don't see how they can recover. It, it, is, it is not the disaster that a lot of people foresaw. But it is not a good series. It's just not very well constructed to be Star Trek. They should have made this into a standalone show so they weren't constrained by Star Trek mythos. But instead they went ahead and they made a Star Trek series that's not Star Trek. Uh, the Shinsu, I like the, the ship. I think that's how they pronounce it. But the ship that most of the, uh, the episode uh, was on. I like the design of the ship. It was reminiscent of the NX class Enterprise. But they never really wanted you to see the ship. And I, I'm wondering if they're ever going to really let you see the horrible design for uh, Discovery. So we'll see. We'll see how it's received, and we'll see if they try to at least explain in some way the continuity issues. But I am not really impressed. It's just not Star Trek. So like, as I said in another video, let Star Trek die with dignity, because it is dying. I do not want Star Trek to be remembered by the next generation of science fiction fans based on Discovery or based on the Abrams uh, films. I am a, a huge critic of the next generation. I watched every episode because it was science fiction and I thought it was too preachy and too far that I left politically. But it was Star Trek. It had that feel of Star Trek. I like Deep Space Nine much better. I like Enterprise better than Next Gen or Voyager. And actually, Next Gen is the lowest run on my Star Trek hierarchy. I would have ranked it at the bottom of all the Star Trek series. That's my opinion. But even Next Gen was Star Trek. It had the Star Trek vibe of hopefulness. But at the same time, it made people ask hard questions. It was self-examination. Discovery had none of that. 
discovery was much more I don't know. Maybe that's, that's just the thing. You can't really say what discovery is. You did, I don't think they knew what they were trying to accomplish. They weren't really trying to tell a story. Because the, you know, the story was rather forced. It's not character driven because the characters so far are fundamentally unlikable. The, sh the show seems to have no guidelines. It has no framework for any of So as you can tell, I'm rambling, but I'm, I'm just not impressed. The bottom line is that uh, this is not a, this does not, it's not Star Trek. It is just not what Star Trek was intended to be. And they, if they didn't want to make Star Trek, then they should have just not made Star Trek. And yes, lost the Cash Cow franchise. But maybe if it went back to its original owners, and they put, they would have been able to give it to somebody that loves Star Trek that wanted to do Star Trek, and would make a series that reflected that love and that desire to make a Star Trek show. So I'm going to get off the camera here because it's, this is going along a little long. The bottom line is just let Star Trek die. If, it, if this is what's going to be Star Trek, then stop. Please stop. Just, you know, let the novels go on and get out of the way of the fan productions. Some of the fan productions have really good ideas. Put some money behind those ideas. It shouldn't have taken uh, a fan production to do something like Axon. That's what the studio should have been doing. Make up Gods and Men. Excellent Star Trek fan film. Good premise based on the TV show. Put some money behind that. Hire those people to do write your Star Trek. But stop bastardizing Star Trek. And that's what Discovery is. That's what the Abrams film. Abrams film. I'm, I'm just saying, they bastardized it. Uh, that's it for this video. This is the Fighting Nerd and his co-host, Jolly Roger. Remember, words make history, and I'm out.